Hello everyone, it's Richard here. In this video we're just going to quickly go over one of the common 3D printing failure modes that you get with poor extru extrusion or lack of extrusion or what looks like jamming with your uh, printer, with your with your 3D printing uh, print head, your nozzle. So what this normally looks like is delamination of layers on your 3D printed part and that can make the part a little bit spongy basically so you end up with something that looks a bit like this and uh, the part itself is it's got a bit of a sponge to it because some of the layers have become delaminated where they haven't extruded properly and then the next layer is built on top and it's extruded better but not quite as well and then it's gone back to not extruding very well at all so you end up with a sort of a, a part you can actually almost pull apart what well, you can pull apart with your with your fingers and uh, this is really annoying because usually what happens is most of, or a lot of your print will print okay or the st it'll start printing okay and then you'll have this problem and sometimes it comes and goes so you can actually finish the entire part all the way to the end and realize that you've got this this spongy printed part at the end which is very frustrating because it's not got, not got any strength and it usually is very poor quality as well so you end up with just bits that break off and pull apart so things to look out for if you do suffer this. One of the things to, to look out for is first of all, it can often be temperature related and temperature of the hot end. So what a lot of people uh, do when they, when they find this problem is they, they start uh, increasing the motor current and giving your, uh, giving your extruder more power to push the filament through. And actually it can be just that your temperature just needs tweaking by a little bit. Uh, one way to test it is if you get problems like this one here, um, and this was one I've been saving for a little while to show you, and what happens is the first sort of five millimeters prints perfectly fine, and as it moves further and further away from the heated bed, you get less and less heat in there, and also your fans are probably on after the first layer, so you're cooling down your part a little bit more, and sometimes that can be enough just to tip over the edge that you're, put, you're putting too much pressure onto the, the, the hot end nozzle because you, ha you haven't got enough heat in there so the extruder is forcing its, its uh, material through and it ends up grinding the filament and then not being able to push it properly sometimes slipping, sometimes pushing you can check that by actually looking at the, the filament when you've, when you've had a print failure like this to see whether there's a grinding marks along it's really bad normally in Bowden systems, or it can be can be worse in Bowden systems. But with that, that's quite convenient because you can take the piece of filament out on the last print that you've done, and actually check to see if you've got these marks or grind marks on there. If you've got that, then you've probably either your your extruder is underpowered, or that your hot end is not quite at the temperature it needs to be able to flow the material well and that was what the problem with this one was I had the fan coming on and actually um, I purposely sort of did this one to, to get some some test failures as the fan comes on more and more and more as the part sometimes as the part um, gets faster your first layer will go down fine because it's actually printing slower so a lack of heat in the hot end can be okay because you're printing a little bit slower so you've got more time to to melt and to bond and, and flow and your extruder is not pushing quite so hard because you're not going quite as fast as soon as you, you go up to the second layer and the third layer and sometimes when it gets to solid infill points where it's doing a lot of infills maybe very quickly the heat can just be zapped out of your nozzle and without the right sort of temperature setting and extruder setting you can start getting this this horrible effect where your parts delaminate so do look at that and it usually only is about five degrees up, up the temperature by about five degrees sometimes if you're printing PLA uh, 195 if you up it to 200 205 it'll actually go away and this problem won't come back other times it can actually be your extruder the way that the filaments gripped could be slipping, could be not quite not enough pressure on there. So do check that as well. And actually the extruder drive gear that bites into the filament and pushes that around, that could be clogged and causing you more problems as well. So do check that. But usually it's down to temperature and sometimes fans, as we've said, the more cooling, if you've got a fan that's cooling the part, but it's also cooling the end of your nozzle and maybe your heating block, as the, temp as the fans speed up, sometimes they can draw more 
energy and heat out of your nozzle uh, and if you're printing faster and faster or maybe you're printing at a certain part a little bit faster at one area you can have nozzle jams um, uh, because of that. The only other problem it, it can be well there can be some there can be all sorts of different things but the only other problem I've observed is that it, it, it's also when you get a build up inside your nozzle and you have a blockage and it's sometimes a temporary blockage it moves around inside the nozzle so you get an extrusion flow and then it stops for a little bit or it slows down because there's a little bit of contaminant that isn't coming out sometimes there's a lot of contaminant that does come out with the with the filament but there's still more in there that's blocking it best way to do that is to use is to do the method of cleaning the nozzle by using a piece of nylon heating it up to say well compatible with your hot end if your hot end's got PTFE and don't go over 250 degrees but if you're an all metal hot end go up to like 270 280 put the nozzle put the um, nylon material in push it all the way keep it pushed and keep pushing it through as your nozzle cools down to around 90 degrees and then yank the filament out and that will tend to pull out a lot of the contaminants and the surface uh, uh, contaminants that are inside a, a blocked nozzle or a contaminated nozzle uh, or one that's just got built up over time with some gunk inside. So that's another good thing just to be able to clean your nozzles out if you're getting in, in an inconsistent extrusion. The last top tip for this really is to actually experiment with the temperature of your nozzle. Know what it feels like and how, how you're pushing pushing your plastic through your nozzle. So heat your, if you're using PLA for example, heat your nozzle to 185 degrees C and manually push plastic into the into the extruder. If you can move the extruder out and feel what it feels like for you just pushing it in, you can get a feel for how much pressure and how much force you need. Um, and then up the temperature by 5 degrees, 10 degrees, go up to say 220 maximum for PLA. Don't go above that because it starts breaking down and should be like honey at that point. should be very, very runny indeed. And that will also give you an idea whether or not your temperature settings are, are correct. Because sometimes the tables in the firmware cannot be very accurate to what it's actually telling you. So you may find that it's reporting at 205 degrees, but really it's running at 180 and that's not good either. So just be a bit careful about what you think the temperatures are and don't really listen to other people when they say they run it at 210 and it's all fine because on your printer it might be different. 210 might not be the same in your setup. So by all means use the guides that, that filament manufacturers suggest but if you know what your hot end feels like and how much pressure you can put into there and you get a feel for it you're likely to avoid these sorts of problems because if you don't solve these problems, they do come back again and again to haunt you over and over. If you think they've gone away, but then you tweak some settings, maybe increase fan speed, maybe increase print speed, maybe use a different material or a different type, they can come back and it can be really frustrating. So try and get to the bottom of your whole temperature extrusion system before you run into too many of these problems. Okay, I hope that was useful. I'll be back again soon for another top tip. Thanks again. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.